welcome to Fleur's de Montaigne. My name is Hannah and today I want to make a short video of Venetian or Murano wedding cake beads. Um, I find that there's quite a bit of misinformation about how to tell if wedding cake beads are in fat Murano or if they're actually a newer bead. Uh, a, a lot of countries that make glass beads uh, try to imitate one another and there's a lot made in Czech and India and China and Japan and it can be a bit overwhelming and kind of confusing to figure out where the beads exactly originated. So I mostly want to go over how to tell sort of the age and the difference um, from where these beads came from. But I want to go over first a little bit of history of wedding cake beads. Uh, they were first made by uh, Murano glassmakers or Venetian. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to say uh, Murano because uh, when you even when you look in reference books, it'll say Murano slash Venetian. It's hard to tell exactly which city it came from. It's they're both in Italy, so they're Italian glass, and they're so similar that it's it's almost impossible to tell the difference. So I'm just going to say Murano for simplicity's sake. Um, and the history of Murano is so fascinating and so vast and old. Um, they've been making glass from what's been documented at least um, as early as the 11th century. Now, as far as beads, you start to see them in the 13th century. And with wedding cake beads, you start to see them in the 18th century. Um, so I would say these are probably the oldest ones I have right here. Uh, these are Murano uh, wedding cake beads. And they are also called, I might butcher this, Fiorato. And I will put the name up so that you can see it, um, know how it's spelt. And I've heard some people say that these look not very well made, um, kind of ugly, and I think they're beautiful. And you can tell how much detail are in these beads. You've get, got this trailing with gold foil. You have these little flowers and they typically use little pink flowers, roses, and blue forget-me-nots with a yellow center. And then not all of them have green you, you normally just see the flowers and some trailing. Um, so this is a very collectible piece right here. Um, and sometimes you will actually find them beaded or strung with check glass. So this is faceted clear check glass uh, spacers we have in between those. These are absolutely beautiful. Um, here's another example of um, check glass and wedding cake beads. Again, these are Murano. And you see that they also have the gold foil. These actually have white flowers, not forget-me-nots, and they have the roses. And then you have these hand-cut, hand-faceted black jet glass beads and they're hand knotted 
and uh, this is a sitar style necklace it's a French term um, basically the necklace comes down to a focal bead and then it has fringe sadly this is missing some threads um, but also a very lovely piece now I have just pieces of a necklace that I've gotten in lots and um, I like to use these older beads, beads in my own um, designs so this is a little bit different now you can see the flowers you've got the blue forget-me-nots the roses and then we have this copper um, color and this is actually copper infused glass and it's called aventurine or goldstone and this goes back to the uh, 17th century the Murano discovered uh, accidentally actually how to make this copper glass and they used it quite a bit you will find this a lot in Murano beads um, and wedding cake beads and we have this beautiful like purple colored glass opaque glass as the base just beautiful uh, example and then we have these very similar in style and these are more of a cobalt blue uh, color there we have the aventurine the pink roses the forget-me-nots very beautiful these are also I just have these loose because I actually made a necklace with some of these um, you will find that they used real gold foil to foil the beads and these are actually really good condition most of the time you will find most of the foil has worn away over time but these are just exceptional you have the trailing pattern the forget-me-nots the pink roses just beautiful now these in the middle are more modern we have these brightly colored beads you also have the aventurine uh, trailing glass in there and you have the red roses the little sort of forget-me-nots they're not as blue um, and this one doesn't have any uh, then we have these transparent blue beads right here with the forget-me-nots the pink roses the aventurine and now you might be thinking okay these these are wedding cake beads and they are they look very much alike the Murano but they are in fact not um, these are newer probably I don't know probably from the 80s to 90s maybe even newer normally um, these kind of tube or barrel ones are made in India and then even the Chinese make uh, wedding cake beads um, and We'll I'll show what's left here. Um, this isn't technically wedding cake, but it has the same look, and it has these sort of amber-colored glass insets right there. Also probably made in India. Um, this is a very unique example. Um, these were probably Chinese, possibly Czech. Um, you will actually see in Murano 
glass and I will show, I will pop up a screenshot, an example of some beads with these sort of white squiggle lines that are Murano, but these, these are newer. Here's another one. You've got the clear glass. Um, and then these are very modern lamp work beads. Um, of course, all of these are lamp work, but this is probably the newest bead. And then I love this one. Very cute. We've got the venturing around the edges and then some green swirls and pink roses. I don't know for sure where some of these are made, but probably check again Chinese um, or India. Those are very popular. And I'm going to go over those last. Now, how do you tell? The main thing is you look at the bead hole. Uh, let me get these since they're loose. When you look at these Murano beads, they're slightly different from one another. You can tell they're not perfectly rounded. There's you can tell where the glass has been kind of wrapped and it's clear in there. You don't really see anything. The whole shapes could be a little irregular. I'm gonna show these as well. Um, and these are a little, little dirty. Typically with the older beads, they will look dirty or worn unless they were well taken care of. See, this size hole is a lot bigger. Um, you can kind of see the striations from where they were wound around the wire when they were um, being made. These are the same way. They are sort of irregular in shape. You can kind of see the bumpy, you know, texture of them. The holes are sort of regular shaped. And now when you look at modern beads, let me get several of these. Um, look at the holes. They're very, they're shaped very nicely, almost mechanical. Now, they all have this white residue in the center. That is a sure sign that these are modern and they are not Murano. And how they were made, they were, uh, you know, strung or made on a wire that was coated in a releasing agent and you see them inside the beads. They also made several at a time. With the Murano glass, they made them typically one at a time and they put them on copper wire or copper tubes, depending on how big the holes were made. And I actually have a picture I'll show of these wedding cake beads on the copper wire. And the way that they got them off the copper, they actually dissolved the copper in acid. So there was no residue, there was no, they did not have to use a releasing agent. So those are, you know, sure signs uh, to look for. Murano are normally irregular in shape and they do not have white residue inside the bead hole. Now, we kind of went over the beads made in India and China, and I want to talk about the Czech uh, flower beads. They're not really called wedding cake, but they're very, very similar. and. 
these are actually from Fire Mountain Gym, and you can see they're made in Czech. And they have these little flowers in them. They are adorable. I, I adore these. And they kind of have this gold stone of entering look. It's a, it's a little lighter in color, so I'm not quite sure if it does have copper. But they, the check makers love to use these little pink roses. And normally you'll just see the pink roses. Now I'm going to show the black ones. And typically what gives it away is these beads will be on a base of what's called satin glass. It looks very silky, um, just glittery, beautiful glass. And it, it does, it looks like satin. It's kind of a frosted look. This is black opaque, but... Um, I'll also pop up some pictures of some Czech flower beads. Absolutely beautiful. I wish I wish I had one to show. Um, but yeah, the the pink flowers look just like Murano, and they are not. They are actually Czech, and you can see the Czech also use a releasing agent. I don't know about the older beads, but definitely these newer ones have it and I will put links uh, in the description of just some research where I found this information and I'll also leave, leave links to two books that I highly recommend if you are interested in antique and vintage glass beads in general uh, not just Venetian but the Czech, um, like the Gablons, the Ringa, those are regions in the Czech that uh, make glass, and some of them still do today. Uh, I highly recommend this Glass Beads from Europe by Sybil Jarkstorf, a Schieffer book for collectors wonderful I reference this all the time and she also did another book called glass and jewelry hidden artistry in glass amazing books it has so much on the history which I plan on doing even more uh, of these short videos on like I plan on doing about the eventering it's in a lot of jewelry and I want to show more examples and how to find it. And just more on Czech glass, Japan glass. There, there's just so much to learn. And so I'm going to end this video here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something from this. That now you have better knowledge on how to tell the difference. And, you know, if you collect or resell you know, you know more so that these are more valuable and, you know, can just expand on your collection. So thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Uh, leave a comment if you would like, uh, like the video. I really love hearing from you guys. If you have any tips or advice for me, I would appreciate to hear it. So. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys next time.